Okay, now let's come to the issue of today. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, coronavirus pandemic, we're talking about millions of infections, cases right now being recorded globally, and uh, a number of deaths climbing towards the million right now. But the recovery also is being very, very high. high too. But, 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 but that's part of the what is up the past is skeptical about reopening totally. And here we are. Some African countries are talking about reopening airports for international flight. Nigeria Republic is at the forefront of this. They are saying that are going to open up their airports, but anyone that will come in into Nigeria Republic must self isolate. He or she must present a kind of certificate of check that he or she has undergone uh, coronavirus testing. If he or she hasn't done that, the person is going to pay for the test to be conducted Conductor. before the other person come to the country and, of course, isolate uh, him or herself for 14 days or, or there. But now, with all this happening globally, do you think that Africa is ripe for this? Well, you see, the truth there remains that for now, the African nations are passing through a very difficult time economically. And again, you find out that some of the humanitarian is that they are, they are supposed to get in terms of vaccine, in terms of personal protective gears and all words that would have been shipped into these countries to assist them in ensuring that they're able to fight the uh, coronavirus. They have not been able to assess them because of this ban in uh, international travel. Though some countries like Nigeria have been doing some evacuation of Nigerians from some parts of the world who are willing to come back home on their own, and uh, the government has been doing that for the past weeks, and uh, it has been going on. But you find out, too, that before you are allowed to come in, you must have been uh, given a certificate of, uh, to show that you don't have uh, the coronavirus. And when you get here, two weeks again, you are expected to be isolated. And like in the case of Nigeria, you are meant to pay for it. So some African countries, especially the ones in the economic economy, that is the West African by tomorrow, 21st, they are thinking of uh, you know, opening Senegal, June, uh, July 15, they have started. Seychelles and some other African, African countries are contemplating August 1st, thereabout. You also discover that um, the African, uh, the, uh, Mr. Mwet, the man in charge of WHO in Africa, has equally uh, you know, said that African nations, they need to, because international communities, even before now, well, they know they have opened up their airspace. Before uh, July 2nd, you have had up to 3,000 to thereabout. But now you have up to 6,000 plus flights mm. within Asia, uh, North America, and Europe. So African countries on their own are trying to, you know, to buy into it. Though um, it might be difficult you know, trying to curtail because it was this flight issue that brought about the issue of coronavirus in Africa that yeah. was not actually prepared for it. But the economy is not doing well. Uh, we are passing through a kind of recession in the first quarter of a century that we already have. So I know of the truth that the African countries will do their best or possible to ensure that the tourism, especially in some countries that are into tourism like Seychelles, uh, we are made to understand that over 55 billion uh, dollars have been lost, especially in the area of uh, tourism and travels. And uh, looking at tourism proper, eight billion has been lost to Africa. You know, within these short speaks of uh, things that you have is a uh, pandemic. But be that as it may, uh, it is a work on development because it will go a long way in strengthening our relationship with the other parts of the world. If the other parts of the world are busy opening, nothing stops us from uh, doing so. Here we don't have the the level of uh, uh, the pandemic here not, not too high because God has been on our side and coupled with the fact that we look at maybe our weather and our ability to manage our sex as it were. Uh, so if other countries that you have high rates are opening, nothing stops us from doing that. But certain things need to be put into consideration in terms of uh, face masks in the plane as well as uh, social distancing. The airlines should do their best of policy to ensure that that is equally done. All right. All right. Uh, uh, yes, I uh, are like expecting Dr. Dominic Ativi to come around to share his opinions and, of course, view on the proposed reopening of uh, some African countries, talking about the airport to international flight due to some circumstances or commitments, so to speak. He just couldn't make it to the studio. Now, does it mean that 
these African countries proposing uh, reopening uh, the, the, the airport for international travels, international flights? Are they placing the economy first before the people? Mind you, Nigeria Republic, they are taking a look at 1st of August. That is the takeoff point for Nigeria Republic. Others do they have their own dates set aside Nigeria, for them to reopen the airport? Most of them have fixed August 1st. Yeah. Uh, Senegal has uh, uh, fixed as July 15th, I just uh, yeah. Past, but most of the cities and some of the African has a fixed August. Mm. Though uh, <clears throat> the economy is one thing, another thing is the interest of the people. Mm. But, the, uh, but, the, but I know of a truth, they are, they are looking at the economy mm. because uh, most of the countries have uh, almost gone into recession. And uh, when you go into a recession, as it were, it affects the same people you are trying to protect, as it were. Uh, so they are looking at it. What will be the aftermath effect if the recession comes? You, uh, before now, you have high rate of deaths in Africa when it comes to terms of poverty and hunger. It, that was what keeps most of the African countries. We go to all these African countries like uh, Eritrea, Ethiopia, some of them down in the interiors of Congo and others. So they are looking at it from that angle that it is in the best interest of their countries, as it were, because if they do not do that, because some of them, they depend so much on tourism, like places like Seychelles, Kenya, and others. You know, people go through there, they are sacrificing game reserves and all what not. So they look at it from that angle. The economy has been affected, as it were. And if they continue, you know, to uh, guard people from not coming into their countries, as it were, the economy will continue to go down. So that is what they are looking at. That is one factor. But they will probably put their people into consideration. And that is why they are talking about social distancing, face masks, and uh, other precautionary measures as... Uh, indicated by WHO. Now, but do you see these personalities in the airport working assiduously for the protection of the territorial integrity of each country in Africa? Do you see them having that wherewithal, the discipline, the mind to really patiently carry out the test necessary for everyone that comes to the airport via international travel? Well, just like some countries have said, like Nigeria here, if you are coming locally, you have to be, if your flight is uh, 1 p.m., you need to be at the airport by 11. One and a half hour or two hours before your flight takes off. So you probably find that most of these African countries as they are trying to open it. First of all, you have talked about the issue of face masks. There will be issue of uh, social distancing. The avenue of people crowding the airport usually as it don't. Some of them have decided to, you know, build out uh, spaces where those who are coming is mostly, except if you are traveling. They have disinfectants both for the individuals as it were as well as their backs and every other thing but another challenge we will have is uh, the attitude of our people especially those who believe they are, they are the, the the big persons and they call themselves as well recently in nigeria it happened Fintiri and the other man when they go to the airport here they refuse that their backs should be disinfected mm -hmm. so these are some of the challenges you will find uh -huh, because of certain of our attitude as a people but i know they will be able to curb it to some extent because if it is not done that means what we are running away from will be hit us harder as it were but even the who is equally warning that if we are going to do certain things have to be put right and the people too need to obey but you'll find that it is a challenge issue of face masks locally here even in mini city here people don't wear you go into the bus as I was coming, I was inside the bus. People don't wear You say, oh, it does not exist because the person has not died or somebody close to you has not died. So that is the issue. All right. Now, if you take a look at the aspect of corruption, mm. you, you, you get to see that uh, corruption has eaten deep into the fabric of uh, Africa, even globally, but Africa seems to be uh, in the forefront in some countries in Africa, not all of it. Do you see corruption impeding the fight against COVID-19 if these airports are open to international travels. Get to your just drop this, moving, drop this, moving. That has been the case of so many airports uh, in Africa. That aspect of corruption, how do you think it can be checked? Well, it is um, it's only when the government is sincere. Because you see, the problem we have as a, as a people, Africans, it might not be all the African countries as it were, because there are some African countries where people are still doing things right. It might not be 100%. But because of this attitude of get rich quick, a man has been placed in a position of authority. You did this. Ensure that this is done to enable us to get what you do. But because somebody has, will decide to grease his pan, he will not do it. 
he would the other he will prefer to look the other way and allow things to go wrong. But if we all decide as a people that things must be done right in the way it is demanded, if I am uh, among the travelers and I see that certain things are not that, I have the duty to call the man who is his responsibility to other. Mm -hmm. so it is your responsibility to ensure that this man put all his face man. It's your responsibility to ensure that this man backs and including himself are disinfected. It is your responsibility that this, uh, the companies that are, the aircraft that are going to fly, the, the, those who are going to board should be able to say, oh, there should be issue of social distance. If I am sitting in seat A, seat 2 should be uh, uh, van, mm -hmm. then seat 3, somebody should be occupying. So we all must be part to ensure that things work well. Though corruption has become a, a kind of uh, uh, eating so much into our fabric, but I know that uh, with time, with the way things are going and with the kind of orientation and enlightenment we are having, we will be able to get out of it, but in no distant time. Mm, but in no distant time. Now, according to records, Africa is now approaching 1 million. We're talking about the case of coronavirus uh, of 700,000 mm -hmm. and still counting. Mm -hmm. We have 15,000 uh, rates of death. Yes. And of course, recovery also, we are still trying to uh, uh, recover. But now, with this reopening of air travel internationally is it not going to increase the number of infectious cases in Africa it will it will to some extent it will mm. but again if the government are sincere and the people whose it is their responsibility to ensure that things are done properly if the people who are coming in you have to quarantine them for 14 days and then after these 14 days and those who are coming in you ensure that they have certificate to show that at the place they are living boarding from that they have been certified, they, they do not have coronavirus. And then you're not quarantining them for 14 days and they show they don't know. Nothing stopping us from uh, opening our airspace to enable us to uh, come back uh, to do business. Because the economy, as it were, most countries depend mostly on the, the air travel and tourism. And for presently, as it is, it has affected. Over 55 billion have been lost by African countries especially in the area of travel and tourism and more is going if nothing is done about it mm, because right now some persons are accusing the Nigerian republic government of just focusing on money that is all about the money uh, after we're talking about tests and kids must you place a price tag on those that don't have a certificate to show that they've been tested or they are negative uh, well you see the essence of uh, you know putting that uh, as a uh, adding that clause that if at the end of the day you need to pay for it mm -hmm. That will equally assist in ensuring that the number of persons who come in who would have had it is reduced. Because from wherever you are coming from, you must have a certificate to show that you are cleared, that you do not have coronavirus. But if you now decide, maybe because of what you know your way, then you not come into the country. For whatever thing they are going to do, you have to pay for it. At a point, Nigerian government said, those who are coming for the 14 days they are going to be here, they are going to pay 250 uh, four or fifty-eight uh, thousand naira mm. to enable them, you know, to cover the cost of their feeding and every other thing for that fourteen days. Mm. So, if you know you are coming into Nigeria, it's a good idea. If you know you are coming in and you know you don't have the, uh, uh, you don't have the clearance showing that you don't have coronavirus. To me, there will no need making that travel. But if you decide to make the travel, be ready to spend the money. It's an avenue for the government to raise more money for those who are coming in. Mm. That is the position. Now, some people of the opinion that we African countries, we just copy and paste sort of because we see or we saw European countries opening their airports, which we want to jump into it, not putting into consideration that the equipment they have up there is far suitable than the ones we have down here to do the screening and of course uh, to make them operate within the ambient when we talk about the fight against this pandemic taking a look at that disparity or other disparity are we really ready for this uh, though, <clears throat> though they might be right but another question is what is the average persons who are coming here what is the number of persons coming into most of all these african niger because republic what business do they do do you or the number of persons who are coming sometimes we find that even the local transport you have in Benin, uh, between Benin and lagos uh, it will even be higher than those who are moving from any part of the world to niger republic as it were so putting into consideration those factors that what is the number of persons coming and those who are coming in, what are they coming for? Mm -hmm. Are they coming purely for business or they're coming for just uh, recreation, as it were? If they are coming in, have they put certain things into place? Certain so things into place, they have their certificate of clear. The government that has decided they are opening their airspace have put certain things in measure. Like here in Nigeria, we have done that. 
Though some persons might say it might not be up to the standard of those people, you know, in the other parts of the world. But look at how many persons are coming in. And what are they coming in for? Because even now, as it were, some persons are even afraid to travel. Look at our people who are living in USA, uh, UK, and other parts of the world. They are all coming back home. And sometimes I was uh, discussing with my wife, I was saying, why are these people running back home? We are saying Nigeria, we don't have light, we don't have road, we don't have light. The same place where you have all the facilities as well. People are running back to a place where you claim they don't have the facilities. Mm. So the question then is, why are they coming back? Why are they coming back? What are they coming back to do? These are the issues. So in the case of Niger, as it were, I know certain uh, things must be, have been put in place in terms of social distancing, putting on face masks, having sanitizers. But from the well. video you saw, I, I, I want the people to just flash the video a little bit. From the video you saw, do you see social distancing in that video in the airport? Uh, yeah, b b because that is just a, a typical airport in, how will I put it now, in a free day, so to speak, where you don't have traffic. Mm -hmm. You got to see people coming together. Despite the face marks, you get to see the crowd moving up and down. Does that really curb social distancing? Uh, well, if, if you, there's no way you can divorce that in, in, a, in a real situation mm -hmm. as it were. Because as people are walking in, uh, trying to board, yeah. definitely see people, you know, trying to you know, uh, kind of. But the, the closest might not be much. Uh -huh. no, but, I, I really want to pity to, to just play that video. <laughs> the closest might not be much. You're going to see them touching the same surface. You know, uh, there's no social distancing. People are like wondering mm -hmm. because in some other camps, you have a kind of an entrance where you used to sanitize persons against COVID-19. Mm -hmm. They walk through. And most African countries, they don't have this in their airports. So put it that into consideration. Mm -hmm. Comparing us to the people or the country we're trying to emulate, are we set for this? Uh, well, we, uh, we have our own look here. We. The, first of all, you talk, about the, uh, you talk about the face mask, you talk about the sanitizer, you talk about the washing, as it were. These are the, our own little way you know, which we use this, you know, mm -hmm. to see how we're able to manage the COVID-19, uh, as it were. So you find out that most of all these African countries as it were, they might not have it, the, the sophisticated equipment as it is, but they, they will try to manage what they have to ensure they're able to go. Again, you look at the number of persons, because that is it's important. The number of persons coming into the Eagles airport, are they as high as what you find in Asia, what you find in North America, what you find in Europe? That is another issue. So if the number of persons who come in are not as high as you find in other parts of the world, to me, they will be able to manage the situation to a larger extent. Mm. All right. Now, does this mean that we the opening of this airport for international travel? Uh, uh, do you see Africa? Will I say yes? Africa as a continent having this resurgence of the feared second wave because that seems to be the fear right now globally that the number may just bounce back and people will start having this effect again of COVID-19 with the opening of airports for international travel. Well, you, you, another thing that you look at is that those who are traveling, who are the people traveling? The common man in the street do not have business going to the airport. Mm -hmm. So those who are traveling are those who have the wherewithal, those who have business to do that requires them to take the flight. But the common man in the street who would have mingled with those persons are not there. So what you find is that very few persons who have what it takes are the ones that need to fly. Mm. And if they are flying, they will put certain measures. Personally, they will do it on their own. First of all, they will talk about uh, caution on their own part, ensuring that all the measures are stipulated by WHO and the country where they come from. They put it in place, mm. coupled with what they will find at the airport. Mm. So I believe strongly that Africa trying to be part of what is happening in order uh, it is for our own good. Because economically, most African countries cannot take care of their people as it were presently. All right, now, with the opening of airports, the proposed opening of airports uh, in the month of August, do you think that is with smart also for schools to be reopened? Uh, let's, let's do this comparison. People are coming from outside the country, in a particular country, and schools also in some of these countries are shot. How can you really relate to that? Uh, you see, in the issue of schools, in the issue of schools, uh, you are, uh, if you look at the issue of schools, you cannot control these children as it were. Mm -hmm. Especially if you look at children in the KG, in the nursery, in the pre-KG as it What were. about the universities? Uh, the universities too. Um, uh, it might still be difficult because of our attitude as a people. We have a kind of a communal way of living. The moment you see of, hey, you hug. 
you try to do. You can't even remember that you need to distance yourself from the person as it were. You find this too in the children in the primary and the nursery. Uh, if any of them gets infected, automatically the whole family as it were will be infected. Mm -hmm. So on the issue of reopening of schools, uh, don't buy it for now. To me, the government can, those of them who, is the, uh, who are ready to write the exams, like those who are in the senior secondary three, those ones can come back, write their examination, space them as it were, depending on the, uh, the, the number of classrooms they have in their schools. Space them, let them write the exams and go home. Then watch by September, if the uh, situation gets better, then you cannot be talking about it. Most African countries, Kenya and others, they are talking about 2021. So on our own part, to me, what is paramount for now is the life of the people. Very, very important, especially the common people, because we live in an environment. There are some environments you get to. You begin to wonder if human beings are living here. Mm -hmm. Because we live in an environment that is not uh, habitable for persons in, you know, to, to be. But because of poverty, sometimes poverty, and sometimes because of our attitude as a people. Well, I told somebody that it is not poverty that makes people to be dirty. Because while we are growing up in the village, we are not rich. Mm -hmm. But we live in a neat environment. You don't even have water systems as in Europe. You have what you have is uh, pit, toilets, uh, and all that. But to go there, they are maintained and also. But because of urban migration and every other thing, you find a large number of persons who live in an environment that is very dirty. That is why when I, I tell people that God has been merciful. If, right. if he decides to come down to the common people, before you know it, the casualty will be much. Now, before we call it a wrap on this show, mm. if international travel has been given a kind of a go-ahead, can one deduce that the world has opened totally, even in the presence of coronavirus? Uh, yes, to some extent, the world has opened, but not completely, because mm. caution is the watchword. Every nation, as it were, will be conscious of uh, the activities, and again, the number of persons who are going to fly the airspace to equally be reduced. A lot of persons are even afraid, even making travels, yeah. even within the environment, let alone traveling far from different mm -hmm. places. All right, thank you so, so much, Barrister Henry Wazor, for your wonderful analysis. I appreciate mm -hmm. your coming. Her. Well, you've heard them. Niger says on the 1st of August they're going to open their airport to international travel if other African countries will follow suit. Don't forget about flight resumption in UK, European country, Asia, America, you just name it. Doesn't mean that the world has reopened finally, even amidst coronavirus. See you tomorrow on International Forum. Bye for now.